be at the right height to ride on this thing. So I think you guys can see pretty well what I ride on there. All right, so again, the first half of the class is basically continuum mechanics, which is sort of the, the, the graduate, you know, solid mechanics. We're interested in how materials deform, right? And if we know how they can, we can describe accurately how they deform, and we have some relationship between how they deform and how they resist deformation, that is, they, you know, the, the forces that are produced when they resist, that a nat material naturally produces when it resists deformation, then we can basically solve a, a graduate course version of F equals MA, and we can compute you know, how materials will deform. Right? And so one concept that we introduce to help to assist us in with, with you know, modeling the deformation is this concept of strain. Right? So strain is sort of a normalized deformation, right? Because, you know, take a material like steel, Steel is homogeneous enough, most steels are homogeneous enough that we can go to the sample, we can go to the laboratory and we can test a very, very small sample and we can get an accurate representation of how it resists force, right? But if you compare that to, say, concrete, which is a very heterogeneous, you know, it has aggregates and uh, matrix material and all this stuff, to accurately get a sort of a representative or an average response of concrete, we need very large samples. And so, you know, the, the size of uh, uh, samples that you test in, in concrete would be much larger than steel, right? But we want a way to compare the strengths or the resistance to deformation of those two materials. And in, in doing that, we need to normalize the deformation that might undergo, right? So, you know, sort of the simplest way to do it, the way the kind of undergraduate defini definition of strain is, you know, if we, if we just, uh, if we have a bar, Right, that has some initial length, LO, and we deform that bar. So we, we pull on it and we deform that bar right, to a new length, L final. Right, And this sort of distance here is the change in length. Everybody read that okay? Right. So the, the sort of undergraduate definition of strain would be then that an Experimentalists would call this the engineering strain, right? It's the change in length over length, or kind of more explicitly, LF minus LO over LO. Right? This is LO. So here, our normalization is LO, the original length. Right? So we're, we're normalizing the deformation by the original length, right? And we might take this term here, right? label it lambda, so that's just like the stretch ratio, the final length over the original length. And then we can maybe write this as lambda minus one, okay? So this is sort of the, what's called the engineering strain. Okay, sometimes you'll hear this called the Lagrangian strain. So this is the strain that we, it's easiest to measure in the laboratory, right? We typically have a sample and we take out a ruler and we know how long it is and then we deform it and uh, measure the final length and, and compute this, right? But we could choose, and I mean, there's, a, there's no reason we have to choose to normalize it by the original length. We could choose to normalize it by something else. And one common way to do it is the instantaneous length during deformation. So, turns out this is called the logarithmic strain. But in that case, what we do is, since we're looking at the instantaneous length during deformation, the change in length is a differential. And so then we want to divide by that instantaneous length, and we integrate from the original length to the final length, right? And if we compute this integral, what you get is the natural log of LF over LO, or using our definition of stretch ratio, um, the natural log of lambda. Right? And 
I mean, you can immediately see that they're related to one another. Right? I mean, the, so the way we normalize it is sort of arbitrary, and there's an infinite number of ways to do it. Right? But but I could solve this equation right here for lambda, right? And then I'd have that lambda is equal to the engineering strain plus one. And then I just plug that in here, and I see that the logarithmic strain is equal to the natural log of one plus the engineering strain. And this is what we do in the lab a lot of times. We measure the engineering strain, and then we convert it into logarithmic strain with this formula. Okay? So this is the logarithmic strain. Sometimes you'll also heard it called the natural strain. And sometimes, especially in experimental publications, you might even heard this called the true strain. Okay. There is another definition um, that I, I prefer to call the true strain. It, it's more kind of in the theoretical world you see this as the true strain. And that's that's the normalization is over the final length. Right? So then, in terms of stretch ratio, you have a little bit different definition. But you see, we could also, you know, they're all related. So we could solve for any one of these and plug it in and get the other one. So how you normalize it is, is basically arbitrary. Okay? Now, you know, it turns out that we can actually combine all of these into something called a Seth Hill strain. So it's just like a family of strain measures. Right. And then, you know, with that, you can see that immediately, you know, that if if M equal to one, you know, we get the engineering strain. equal to minus one, you get the uh, logarithmic strain, I'm sorry, the, the true strain as I've defined it. So I, I guess I should also point out, this is also sometimes, the last one we discussed is called the Eulerian strain, and also sometimes the true strain. So it's important to know so as m approaches zero in the limiting case, then you get the logarithmic strain. So this is sort of a generalized definition. Okay. Now, 